The whole term personal branding is something, for some of us, is rather new. This is my definition of personal branding. It's actively managing your image and defining your unique value. And we've actually been hearing about this today. We've been hearing about it. I heard it in, in the session that I went to that Bonnie was speaking. I heard it with Carla. We've heard it all day. How do we define our value and share that online? And that's what we'll be talking about. I'm going to start with a little story about myself that goes back to the 60s and the 70s. And when I grew up, I was the girl that was the, the new girl. I was always moving. Who else moved when they were? Oh, lots of new girls. <laughs> So we all have a, we all understand what that means, right? And so for me, I, every few years, my dad would get a different job, and we'd move to a new place. And it meant, I learned a lot of things. I actually learned, that was my first ta time learning about networking and personal branding. We didn't use those words, but I had to make friends. I had to create a first impression, and it might have been on the playground, or it might have been in the neighborhood, or at school. But I can remember very clearly uh, moving up to Rochester, New York in the fourth grade and I, the children making fun of my thick Boston accent, which I no longer have. But at the time I had that and they made fun of me and I, you know, I knew that that was, how, that was part of the impression I had was the way I spoke. And then when I moved to Pennsylvania, I remember very clearly that I didn't wear what they wore in Pennsylvania. And that first day on the bus learning that I didn't really fit in, right? So I was learning about that. And I also learned through the many years of moving around that when you move, you are starting over completely. And you can have some control of what, how people think of you. And you have to learn to make friends. So a lot of these things, I think, for me being always the new girl, it made it so that I, to this day, feel very comfortable meeting new people and starting over. And uh, for me, it, it, so many people said they felt sorry for me, but I feel in a way it was an advantage. You know, I, when I look back at it. So it's kind of framed who I am. Uh, so and here I am doing personal branding and, and all of that. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, in 1997, there was an article written in Fast Company. Did anybody read this? Yes, okay, a few people. So Tom Peters wrote this article, The Brand Called You. Up until that time, a brand was a company. A brand was a you know, product, right? It wasn't a person. And he wrote this article, I have to say, it's almost 30 years old, this article. I recommend you read it. It's a long article, but it's so inspiring. I still read it, and I save it you know, nearby my desk, because there's so many tips about how you think about yourself, and even though it's, it's um, you know, almost 30 years old. So that was a really beginning point for personal branding. And now people are using that terminology. How many people think about their personal brand? Great, great, great. If I asked that question two, three years ago, it might, might have been a lot less hands, right? I think so. So what happened in 2003? We're doing a little history lesson. This was the year LinkedIn started. It was a startup company. Now, Facebook started in 2005, okay? LinkedIn was kind of a sleepy, sleepy company because people didn't, ha didn't even hear of it, right? Be Facebook just went crazy. And then if you look, uh, these are the numbers of users. So you start over 2003. They were pretty sleepy for quite a while. And here we are. Actually, this, this blue line is 2014. And uh, it's not showing. I don't know why. But 2015, in December, they hit 400 million users. Party time in Mountain View, California. <laughs> they did. They had parties because they hit 400 million. But if you notice, what's happened? It's the last couple years, it's caught on fire. So have you noticed you're getting more invitations? Yes? More activity. Everywhere you go, people are talking about their LinkedIn. That's, it's just every almost every conversation. And that's because everybody's joining, right? 400 million. And the, the 400 million, let's talk about those 400 million people. They're global, 23 languages, right? And highest salary. So if you compare other social media platforms, and they do demographic studies, the, the users on LinkedIn are typically, are, are, are on average, a higher salary than all the others. So these are the kind of people that are going to hire us, that are going to promote us, right? 
that are going to select us, that are going to partner with us, because they're the people that are professionals. Oh, they're also the highest educated, by the way. LinkedIn has the highest educated. So these are the kind of people that we want to hire and promote us. When I think about LinkedIn, and it's not just, it started out more on the career, the career focus, but there's so many sides to it now. I get hired to go into with companies and I work with sales teams, right? And why do I work with sales teams? It's because, what's that? Prospecting. Prospecting, yes. I'm not sure who said that, but yes, prospecting. Why? Because buyers have changed. The way people buy products have changed. They're looking now to get some proof or reference. They want to have a familiarity with it. They don't just take a cold call anymore. They don't answer the phone. So they're not going to, all of that's important from a sales perspective. So buying has changed. It's caused selling to change. But what about recruiting? Right? So recruiting has changed. So the, the whole point of this, it's all sides of the coin. So I even work with HR teams and help the recruiters work on their brand. Because nowadays, candidates who are going to go and work for a company, they care about who they're going to work for. They're going to care about the hiring manager and the recruiter. Who is this person? What do they believe in? Could I see myself at that company? And who represents the company best than the employees? So it's all sides of the coin now. And that's one of the reasons why it's going up so high in popularity. 96% of, of recruiters are searching on LinkedIn. It doesn't mean they're all using the premium platform. Many of them are. There's a platform called Recruiter, which basically gives recruiters a much more in-depth uh, view of all candidates and, be able, and searches can, you can search and you can filter and sort. And they pay for a premium for that. Um, there are also many recruiters that are using the free version. And I meet those people every day. There's lots of different ways you can do searching within LinkedIn. But they're there, and they're looking for candidates, absolutely. And they're using LinkedIn. But what's here, here's what's really interesting. So maybe you're found on LinkedIn because some, and someone sees your profile. They, 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 they've looked for keywords, and they found you. That's great. But maybe, maybe it didn't happen that way, because most jobs are found through networking. Maybe someone handed your resume, right? So you were referred, which is really the best way to get into a, an organization. So you're referred. Guess what? When you get referred, they're still looking at your LinkedIn profile. So they didn't find you that way. They're, they know you're coming in for an interview. They're going to check you out. So it's hugely important. And the studies have shown that today's talent, and this is what today's talent meaning you, you're, the, you're today's talent, to find out about job opportunities, you're going online and you're asking friends and people you know. Does that sound right? This is what I was just saying. 76% of candidates want to know about their recruiter before they apply. This is really true, particularly for millennials. They really care about who they're going to work for and what that person stands for. And 57% of buyers are research, researching before they talk to a sales rep. So if you're in a company, you think about your company, and if you've got salespeople at your company trying to make sales in the same way they were doing in the 80s, because I was selling in the 80s, those same ways aren't working the way they used to. <laughs> Part of it is security. You can't, you can't walk into a building. I used to do cold calling. Um, I, I had a sales background. I could walk into a building and have a sales conversation without knowing anyone. I could walk in, introduce myself, tell them why I was there, ask for a few minutes of their time. And they, I, I'm not saying it would happen every time, but a high percentage of the time, I could have a sales conversation on the fly. Today, after 9-11, it's not so easy to walk into a building. And buyers, they don't want to, they don't want to take the time. They want, they want to have that trust before they meet you, right? And they're going online to do that. So this is what I'm going to talk about is personal branding, and it applies to whether you're a buyer, because you're all buyers. Some of you might be in sales. Some of you might be job seekers. Some of you might be recruiters. Is there, I mean, maybe there's a comment, is everyone, and actually I want to say this, you should think of yourself as, no, as more than just one. Don't just think of yourself as the talent or the job seeker, because if you're working for a company, you want to think of yourself as a salesperson too, because really everyone should be represent, you all represent your company. So there's a lot of ways to think about this, and recruiter, because you're, you're, the, you're almost, the, you're the face of the company to your friends, you're the brand. 
23 million profile views. So that's that, that whole chart where we saw the, the growth in LinkedIn, the number one activity is for looking at profiles. So people are looking at your profiles and you're probably looking at their profiles. Am I right? Favorite thing. So that first impression that I talked about when, when I was a kid and, and, that, and having my own children, teaching them, you know, you shake hands and you look someone in the eye and you smile, you do all the things for a first impression, it's still important, but today's first impression is online. Today's first impression is usually with LinkedIn. People are gonna go there before they meet you and have an opinion about you. It's pre-selling you before you get to that interview or that meeting. So your personal brand, getting back to that, which is what are those things that make you different from everyone else? And we're all unique. It's a matter of thinking, taking the time to think about how you want to present yourself and bring that out. And I think people are, many people are afraid to do that, but you can do that very nicely on LinkedIn. It's not the same as a resume where you just take where I worked, where I went to school, and I put it online, and that's it. If you do that, it's a missed opportunity because by thinking about your personal brand, you can bring out what those things are that are special about you that would make someone want to hire you, to talk to you, to meet with you, to partner with you, any of those things. Um, when I mentioned that your profile is not exactly, it's not just a carbon copy of your resume, what I want to really bring out is that it's, it's personal and professional, right? So it's all, everything is professional. I don't, I don't want to have anyone think that it's, it's not completely professional. But we're all people. And what we bring individually to the job or to the business is what is important. And people hire people, right? People buy from people. So that you're making that company, when, when you're representing a company or when you're representing yourself, you really want to think about what those very unique elements are. We're going to talk about that. So I'm going to start off. Who likes Dr. Seuss? Oh, yes. I love Dr. Seuss. All right, so Dr. Seuss, you know, he's so motivational. He just had a birthday, by the way, March 2nd. And um, I'm going to ask, I have two quotes from Dr. Seuss because, believe it or not, he was very motivational when it comes to things like personal branding. So Karen, can you read the first quote? You're on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the one who will decide where to go. Thank you. And Bonnie, can I have you read? The second I love one. Dr. Seuss. Today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. <laughs> I love that. Youer than you. I mean, it's, not, it's, so, it's so apropos for this conversation. Okay. Thank you for those quotes. And if you want more quotes, I have a whole, whole lot more quotes from Dr. Seuss on, on personal branding. Um, so what happened in, for many, how many here have been on LinkedIn for many years? Okay, great. Terrific, terrific. Uh, then you have that in common with me. I started back in 2005 when there were very few people, very early. And so those of you that have been on for a while, uh, I think you'll be surprised. There's been a lot of changes to the profile in these years, between 2012 and 2014. So for those of you that are more experienced and those of you that are beginner, we wanna, we're gonna go through some various things. And for everyone, it's upping our game strategically. That's what we're all, whatever point we're at, because no matter who we are, we can improve where we are strategically with our, with our profile. So what they did in those years, they made a lot of changes. They added a lot of sections, and I'll show you some of those. And they also added some abilities for images and some videos, et cetera, which are really can really heighten the, um, the, the, the imagery of your profile and make you come to life. It really brings out your brand. So words are important. We're going to start talking about words. And words are important because there's something called keywords, which means that's how people are searching. So when those recruiters are searching for you, if they're looking for a marketing person, or they're looking for digital marketing, or they're looking for HR, whatever they're looking for, they're going to actually be able to put those keywords in to LinkedIn and get a list of prospects, candidates that they're interested in. It's the same with uh, buyers, right? You can do that. So those are called keywords. But I want you to think more strategically than that even and say, what is the wording, what is the language of my industry? <coughs> if someone came to my profile, am I talking the language? 
just put aside the SEO and the keywords. So this can be particularly important if you're entering a new industry. You could sound like you don't fit in the industry, that you don't understand it, or you can sound like you do fit in based on the language that you use, right? And I also like to think about um, the wording as being as friendly as possible. I like, when I think about wording on LinkedIn, I like it to be first person, right? Oftentimes people think because, oh, it's got it's professional, I've got to write third person, Mrs. Long, Mrs. Sandra. No, it's social media, it's personal, it's professional, but there's, but most LinkedIn, ex well, all the LinkedIn experts that I know around globally would tell you, first person. So we're gonna say I and my. And we're gonna tell our story. It's gonna make it more compelling and more interesting for people, to be, you want them to be interested in you. That you want them to be interested immediately so that they will actually go and read your entire profile. Because people's attention is short. And they're gonna quickly look and say, decide if they're gonna read, read your page, right? So, and also making it customer, uh, customer friendly as the first person, but also inviting. And the way you, the way you talk, so the language is very important. And it's not just to copying and pasting over from a resume. Images and rich media. So I, I alluded to that, and I'll show you some examples. And there have been a lot of updates in this area. But many profiles now can be so much, so much more in-depth than just a resume. So the first one is a headshot. You're 14 times more likely to have someone look at your profile if you have a headshot. What does this mean? That means some people, when you, if you don't have a headshot, you invite them to connect, they will, they will not connect with you. <laughs> and if you're a group manager, I actually manage a couple of LinkedIn groups, and if someone doesn't have a, a photo, we usually don't accept them. Because we don't know, who, are, who is this? You know, I don't know, it's just, it's one of those things that People are very turned off if you don't have a photo. So you want to have a photo. And I say, get a great photo, because if you have a great photo, you're going to be more confident. And they're going to remember you. Think about someone that you met three or four years ago, and you want to connect with them. Don't you want them to remember you right away and have that positive feeling? So just headshot is really the most important thing from an image perspective. Now, in 2013, LinkedIn added the background images, the banners, so for those of you that have been on for a long time, I would say 70% of the people I work with that have been on LinkedIn for a long time don't even realize that they're missing this. This is a huge thing. So there's background banners. And when they started out in 2013, it was only for premium users. But now they opened it up at the end of the year, 2000, the beginning of 2014, they opened it up to everyone. So you all should be able to do that. Now if you're premium, you'll get a choice. They have a choice of about 20, uh, sort of um, templates you can choose from. Uh, and if you don't like those, you can upload your own image, right? Or uh, if, you're, if, you've got a free, if you've got the free version, you can also upload your, your, your own background. And I like to think about your background banner tying in with what your message is, right? Tying in with your brand. So if you're, um, and it can be so many, I mean, for some, many of the companies I work with, we actually do we, we train all the employees and they all get a similar banner. So Because what happens is, as an employee, you're uh, an extension of your company. And if you're part of a team, it's kind of fun and they all have a banner with a, with a maybe it's a photo of the product or they have a, or they have a photo of the, the business with a logo and they all, they all learn how to use it. And they all have this, because you know, they represent the company. Um, if you're on your own, you can do the same thing for your company. You can create something that reflects your company or yourself. If you're a musician, you can have a picture of your instrument. I mean, you can, you can have whatever you want. I mean, I'd like to think that it connects to you and what you care about. Sometimes I've got clients that are putting a background banner, which is their city. So I've got a lot of New York City um, backgrounds or Boston backgrounds um, that are just behind their, you know, it depends on what your, what your business is. But there's a lot of opportunity to have a nice background and tie it in with your, so in this, this gentleman here, um, he is in the security business, so his background banner shows, those are all um, his client buildings, so they're office buildings and residential, so you can kind of get a sense of where, what the businesses that he serves, right? And um, so for me, I, I do have a headshot, but it's not showing here, it's on the left-hand side. Um, so 
I have a, my, back, my background banner kind of looks like a LinkedIn thing because that's what I do, right? And also the headline is another opportunity, again, this is back to words, but this, when you think about your profile, the first two things that people notice is your headline and your photo, your headshot. And sometimes that's all it is. And they click right through you and they never look. So you want your headshot and your headline to be something where they're gonna click through. Right? Now you can take your, your job, your title that you, from your company. Just, you know, if you're a manager of such and such or an associate, you can take that exact title. And LinkedIn will default and put that as your headline. But you also have the opportunity, there's 120 characters, you have the opportunity to create your own headline. So I didn't, instead of being you know, owner of Post Road Consulting, which doesn't necessarily mean as much to people, as telling them this is what I am, LinkedIn and social selling speaker, right? So I wanted to be more descriptive. So you have that opportunity. And there's nothing wrong if you wanted to leave your, your company's you know, manager or associate at such and such a bank or whatever company, and then add wording about what your special area is. Maybe you're you know, specializing in small business loans or something like that, so that when people come, they're, they understand your unique, where, where you see yourself, right? So the experience section <laughs> is the section that, where you talk about your position. And you have your title and your, your logo of your company and your date, all of that's very important. And the, the key here is you want to show at least three positions if possible. If you're only showing one, you are putting yourself out of contention with recruiters in a, in a great way and from search because the search, the minimum search, and I gave you this on your handout, LinkedIn has a thing about 100% um, minimum requirements for the search. You'll see there's a list, I believe I gave you the list, and one of those is to have three positions. So you're not optimized for search. Did I not give you that on the sheet? Here it is. Yes, 100% complete profile. All right, that's the list. You, that's your minimum that you need to have. And you don't want to be not in contention for the search. Yes? If you've been in a position for 20 plus years, mm -hmm. and, you know, the position you had before when you were a teenager at a grocery store. Or yes. Or so the 20 plus years, but you've had different positions in the company, mm -hmm. then I'd separate them out. Yeah. It's funny because sometimes people have the opposite situation, like they'll work for 20 years at a company and maybe they had uh, 17 jobs. I mean, you know, it could happen. <laughs> you don't necessarily want to show 17 jobs, right? So, but the magic number is, is three or more. Um, I actually worked at a company for almost three decades. And I originally had, you know, all these positions. I keep, as I get older, I keep cutting them down just because I want to consolidate them. Um, but I would say, if you've got 20 years, it's, it's never anyone who has, and even if it's, a, if it's 10 years in your current position, you're <coughs> also hurting yourself. From a recruiter perspective, I'll tell you why. If a recruiter goes onto their platform, the one they pay for, they can filter out, they can say, I want someone who's been in a job, um, you know, one to two years, two to five years, five to 10 years, 10 and over, right? So. The question I'm going to ask you is how many recruiters do you think are going to pick 10 and over that you're in your current job? Not many. Right? I'm not saying to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying to falsify anything. I'm saying, but you can present things differently. Like you can take, like if you're 20 years at a company you, you, and if you've had different levels, it's just a matter of how you're packaging, but always be truthful with every date and every job. And if you are combining, like I've done the thing where I've combined jobs, uh, because I just was too many things, like maybe I was, you know, sales this and sales that, I would combine it. And within the description, I would say between 2002 to 2005 was this, and I'd be very accurate. And 2005 to 2007, I mean, always be accurate. That's the other thing. If the recruiter sees your dates are wrong, they don't even call you. Like if there's a date mix up, like the resume and the date on, the, on LinkedIn, make sure your dates match, make sure they're correct, but give yourself the advantage if, if you don't, you know what I'm saying about the combining of the jobs. So, um, so anyway, experience. But 12 times views. If you have three positions listed, you're going to have 12, 12 times the number of views. Right? So that's pretty big. Pretty big. Skills. Oh, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. 
Um, how much detail do you include? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I like, so you, you can take some of your achievements from your resume here. And what I like to do is particularly using action verbs and outcomes. You know, they probably, when you know about resumes, they tell you don't just say responsible for this, responsible for that. You know that, right? Hopefully. A lot of LinkedIn profiles say responsible for this, responsible for that. It, it doesn't do you as many favors. You wanna, you wanna think about using action verbs, what you've accomplished, right? What the outcomes are, what is the business outcome? So there's a lot of different, you actually have quite a lot of space here. Um, there's a lot of different formats. One format that I like is to have a short paragraph about what you do, maybe three sentences about what you do, and then a bullet pointed list of your accomplishments using action verbs, right? That seems like a very good kind of, and you can take those, that bullet pointed list from your resume as long as you're up to date and you're using the, the, the action words. That help? Okay. All right, skills. This was also kind of introduced in around 2013. And there were people that were complaining, who complains about skills and endorsements? Everybody, does anybody feel that way? Okay. This is really important. This section is important because again, the skills are what companies are looking for. They're using it for search big time. And not only that, um, LinkedIn is making this more important. For anyone who's searching for you, whether, whether you're not even, maybe you're not even a job seeker, but anyone searching for you, the skills are becoming more and more important. So as much as the way they introduced it, I wasn't thrilled with the way they introduced it, and people were confused, and people are still confused, but I just want you to know it's still very important. And what you wanna do, and oh, see 13 times more views when you have skills. And again, it's on your list. And I have some people that don't put skills in. Now, if anybody is in the wealth management business, is anybody in that? Yeah. You know what I'm gonna say? Can't, Can't use it. So when LinkedIn first came out, they just they introduced it without thinking about your industry. And then the people in the wealth management said, oh wait, you know, so they had to make changes. So now you can hide it and you can turn it off and that's what most of them do. Which is a disadvantage from a search perspective, but you're all in the same boat, <laughs> okay? Now, one thing to be aware of, you can move them around. You can, if you have some skills on there that are not suitable for you, you should take them off, delete them, right? You can, you can reprioritize them so that your best skills are showing where you want them to and think about your personal brand. What are you trying to accomplish? One thing I see on this, a lot of people are not strategic enough with what they have for skills. So think about really what you do and what you, what you want to do, what you are doing, what should those skills be? You should have some that can be technical, that's fine, but you, know, you want to think about being strategic on that. Employers now, it's, it's more than ever, want people that are good learners because everything changes so fast. So when I think about being a good learner, you can present yourself as a, as a continuous learner in all these different sections. So the first one is your education, which is your higher education. And education, you want to use your higher education, and you can put high school here as well. This is, the education is not where you put your uh, certifications or your courses, this is a separate section, right? And in education, make sure you list your degree. I have to tell you, I do, I do a lot of hands-on classes with people, Half the time, people don't put their degree in. They just don't think about it. They just, they've forgotten about it or whatever. Make sure your degree is in there. Because if someone sees it without a degree, they're gonna assume you don't have it, right? So make sure it's correct, accurate. Um, courses, there's a whole sep separate section for courses. So if you've taken courses since you graduated, that's a great thing. And they could be, you know, courses at a college. They could be courses in your, in your business. They could have been courses at your company. And certifications are big. People have all kinds of cert, you know, project management certifications. Those of you in wealth management might have Series 7 or Series 60 through all those kind of certifications. Um, there's uh, Microsoft has certifications. If you think about it, uh, and even if you're in, the, in a real estate business, there's, you know, like, this is where you put your licenses and that kind of thing. But all of this paints a picture of you as a learner as part of your brand.
Now this might surprise you, personality and values and passion, that is what is the, the, the unis of you, right? That's what makes you unique. And you can share that on LinkedIn in a very professional way. And the best place to do that is usually in your summary, when you're telling your story. And, you know, because when you think about all the people that, that do get hired for various things, the personality and, and maybe the drive or the ambition, all that is very important. And so you can tell your story very effectively in the summary. Your network and community, that's, you know, you see that from the LinkedIn groups that you're a part of. Obviously, when you're connected with people, that's your first level connection. You can see their connections. So your, your network and your community is a part of your brand, right? All of that is part of you. And then vision and goals. So this is particularly, um, I see this with um, early, you know, new grads, they might not have all the experience, but they might have a vision of where they're going. And so they can really use this really effectively to, to paint their picture. Attitude and presence. Well, how do you like this guy? <laughs> Attitude makes a difference. I have a client who's an interior designer down in Greenwich, Connecticut. And in her summary, so she's, she's, she's got a lot of capabilities. I mean, she's very proficient. She's got images of her, what she's designed behind her, you know, that, that background banner. She's got pictures of beautiful uh, homes in Greenwich and apartments in New York City, big penthouse things that she's designed. And you know, if you read about her, you'd be really impressed. But in her summary, she talks about gratitude. You read it and you want to, to, to know her because you read, you know, she talks about how grateful she is about how, and she talks about her business in such a way that it comes across in a wonderful way. Her attitude comes across. Versus someone who's just there bragging about this, I got this award, and I got, you know what I mean? It just, it, you can really do that in the summer. She did that. Her name is Lynn Gerlich. Reputation and trust and social proof. So this is the recommendations and the endorsements, right? Didn't used to be this way. You, you know, when, we, when you went for a job or uh, tried to get work or tried to sell, and, and me, I've been in the selling world a long time, longer than I haven't done the job seeking thing in a long time, but people would ask me in the old days, I need some recommendations. I need, I need referrals. And you have to go and come up with some names and provide them. And nowadays, it, it, it almost becomes not necessary. If you're really managing your LinkedIn the way you want to, your recommendations and your endorsements are there for all to see. So you want to be very proactive in how you manage that and it's it really is just a matter of getting into the habit of asking people at the right time and in the right way for the recommendations and endorsements. So interests. Now that seems like a funny thing. I'm not talking about Facebook. Let me go back to Lynn, the interior designer. So she's there. She's an incredible interior designer. And she talks about this actually in her organizations and her interests. But she's in the historical society. She's does, she does work with the art commission. She, you know, she does all these things, the museum, and here it gives you a feeling of her that she cares, she has an interest in the community and in how things look. And it ties in with her brand of being this incredible interior designer, of her interest, and if she does garden, garden club, that kind of ties in, right? It makes sense. Um, leadership, this is huge. Leaders right now, I mean, they're, they're deciding about their brand and using LinkedIn for their leadership brand. And I can look on LinkedIn and I can tell a lot about a leader <coughs> from their profile. Well, part of it is thought leadership, meaning you know people are publishing, which I'll talk about. You, know, you can blog on LinkedIn. It's big, or you can share content, right? But the other thing is on recommendations. So this might surprise you. But if I'm looking at a senior leader, I'm not necessarily looking for the recommendations they got. I'm looking for the recommendations they gave. Because if I'm a senior leader, I've managed teams, hired people, I've run projects. If I'm not recommending people, how does that seem to you? It tells you a lot. It tells you a lot. So as you, as you think about your own leadership, 
who are you helping? Who can you? And I'm not, again, not saying uh, false. Everything should be completely out. If you really believe in somebody, somebody that you've worked with, somebody that, that you know you believe in and that is somebody you want to help and you trust and you, you want to be associated with, write them a recommendation. They will remember you forever. You'll be helping them, and you'll be helping your own leadership brand on LinkedIn. So we, that's what we, So the thought leader part is what's called, anyone here publishing on LinkedIn? Anyone here? Yes? Oh, wow, seven of you. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's fantastic. Usually, I get maybe one person. So that's fantastic. Uh, so in 2013, again, a lot of these ha things happened in 2013. LinkedIn uh, actually has become a major platform for publishing. And not only can you publish, but they are producing and publishing content from all over, right? So they have influencers that they chose that are big time influencers, but they also bring in uh, other publications that they're running through their Pulse channel. So it's a really great opportunity. And you will get this, you would have gotten this, and you probably have gotten this because when they rolled this out it was February 13 and only a small group of people got it and they kept increasing it and now if you're English speaking on LinkedIn which I think we all are you have this feature you would have gotten this invitation right and eventually the other languages will follow but right now English speaking has this ability and what it means when you get into the platform you can, you have an opportunity, it's very simple, to have your headline, write your content, add an image, and I will say, if you're gonna start out blogging, or maybe you're blogging somewhere else, sometimes people are blogging somewhere else and they decide to switch over to LinkedIn, and there's reasons why you might wanna do that, because your, your network's on LinkedIn. They might not be on your website every day, but your network is on LinkedIn. Uh, who's seeing posts coming to you, little notifications that your friends have been writing? Good. All right, you're getting those, that's great. These are, these are my articles. So if, if you go to my profile, you'll see at the top of my profile my, some of my articles, right? And you'll see Mary's articles, and you'll see Bonnie's articles. And guess what? I'm writing about things related to my brand. So I'm writing about LinkedIn. I, if, you want, if you want to see articles about LinkedIn or social selling or recruiting, that's what I write about, you can find it. If you want to read articles about ambition, Go look at Bonnie's page and she'll see. So that, that's part of her brand, right? So that's kind of nice. And it's searchable on Google. So um, that's fantastic. So someone could be searching and that LinkedIn article could come up, right? I want to caution people. This is a real blog. I see mistakes. I see people putting ads. I see people putting like a paragraph. It's not a status update. It's a blog. You want, to ha you want to take it seriously and have it be minimum six, seven hundred words. I mean, that's, a, that's the minimum. You really want to have a serious blog, have good images, and, um, and have it be thought, uh, thoughtful and helpful. Not, you know, this is me, <laughs> you know, buy my stuff, read my book, uh, you know, it's not, it's not that, it's, it's helpful and thoughtful and you'll get followers. I'll show you that in a second. But you'll also get these analytics. Um, so I can even see who are the people reading my posts. I can get the demographics. And I can see these are the industries I'm getting. Um, and I'm seeing the job titles. And it makes sense, most of them are around New York, which is where I live, right? But, 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 but I'm getting it all over. And the, my traffic sources are very interesting. So 10% so of the people that are coming, and I get a lot of views because I write about things that people are really interested in, the LinkedIn and the career. I get a lot of views. And so 10% of them are coming to me from Google search. I'm pretty excited about that, right? 77% LinkedIn, Google Plus, and Facebook. Because I put it on, you know, once you put it on LinkedIn, you want to put it on Twitter, you Google Plus, put it on Facebook, put it on, you know, you put it all over. All right. And these are the posts that I, this is what Mary was just talking. One, can you, one second? No? Promise? So I'm going to get notifications. So I wrote this article, Social Selling, What Are You Afraid Of? And I posted it on Halloween. I had a big picture of a pumpkin. Because, you know, it's, it's business, but I have a little fun. And so I had 39 people like your post, and they showed the people. And I can go in and see who those people are. And seven people share. And then this person that says, now following you. So I'm going to get followed. They're not connections. 
they're going to follow me. That means when I post something, they're going to see my article. So a lot of people don't realize that you can have a follower on LinkedIn. So now if you write about something that is like a topic that LinkedIn has a lot of energy around, it's called the Pulse Channels, you could actually get featured in one of their, this is only a few of them. There's, there's a lot of other channels. But if you are writing about professional women, for example, you want to write your article and your think about your headline and your topic so that it will get picked up by that. Because what happens is there's 7 million followers of professional women. And so that means outside of your network, they will expose your article to those 7 million people. Right? So for me, there was, I got picked up one of my first articles. So instead of, you know, maybe I normally get 500, 700 views, I get pretty long, pretty many views. The first one I did, they picked it up and put it through the career section, and I got 4,000 views. So you can see the difference when you get put into a Pulse channel. Yes? I'm just, just stepping back to that question regarding the status versus the posts. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to give you an actual example. So when my book got published, mm -hmm. um, I went out to LinkedIn and I shared the link to it as a status update, this is done. Yeah. Is that something that should have been done under the other one? or No, I think that if you did it as a status update, that's fine. But if you mm -hmm. wrote a book, I think you should also write yourself a blog post. And you can write many blog posts and you can point to your book. Yeah, I would do, I would do all of that. Because that will stay there forever. Your status update is going to be gone. Right? So, in fact, this is answering your question. There's the share the update and here's publish a post. Over here. This is blogging. That pla the, the, the dashboard I showed you. So, now here's an interesting thing. 65% of buyers say content influences. So if you're on this, in the sales world, and whether you're sales or job seeker or just trying to build your brand, your, the stuff that you write, your content, is going to influence people and in what they think about you. Uh, how you engage. So this is a great conversation. You people are talking about sharing and liking. How you engage and how well you do that engagement is how people will have an impression of you if you know kind of what you're doing, right? Someone, who, for example, someone who overposts. You see them, they post 20 things in a row. That's a little bit too much, right? People that know how to uh, thank people or, or to respond or you know to, to like things. That's all part of the etiquette and that makes a difference in how you share. Can everybody see that? Yes. So always know what's private and what's public. So there's two things that are private on LinkedIn. One is, well actually three things. Your invitation, so your invitation that you send out to someone is private. Your in-mail, which is your internal messaging, is private. And when you apply for a job, and anything you do under the job tab is private. Everything else, people can see. So I always tell people that. Make sure you know it's public and private. Okay. So we've talked a lot about the various parts of the profile. And I really prefer to have a story as part of the summary. If you have, a, and we all have a story. We all didn't just fall off of, of a turnip truck or something. We all have a story. So if you can tell your story, and I told you mine in the beginning that I'm the new girl. That's kind of how I got here. And you all have a story about yourself, maybe how you got into your business, why do you, what do you love about what you do, you know, where are you, or where are you headed. What, you know, think about your own personal story and how you can bring that to life in your summary. And what's special, all this together, is part of your unique value. I'm going to give you an example of a real person. I love real people examples. I'm going to use somebody in the room. All right, Bonnie Marcus. <laughs> All right, so let's look at her personal brand. Um, what do we learn about her by looking at her profile? So she's strategic. We learn right off the bat that she's a keynote speaker, an author, and a coach because she has it on her headline. Right? We know that right up, and plus she talks about it. It's not, there's no question about what she is. And see, there you can see her headline. So she's got words and images, right? So she's got, here's her, her headline, and she's got an image from her book in the back. So if you're an author, that would be nice to have a banner that reflects your, your book. She's got a story. She didn't just... You know, she, she's, a, she's an author, and she's a coach, 
and she's spoken here four times at Bryant, but she has a story and you can read it about how she had she went through these situations in work where she lost an opportunity. She had a real a real story that happened to her that took that drove her to this career. So it makes it more compelling when you read her summary, you're more interested in knowing more about her and what her work is, her passion. She's a thought leader. She's got articles up there. Here are some of the articles. She's connected. She's a leader. So these are some of the organizations that she belongs to. And she's got social proof. People are recommending her. People are endorsing her. So you can learn something from a profile. Um, and she's got links in Rich Media. So uh, on her profile, you can see her video of her speaking, which is fantastic. And you can see other images. So she's brought, she's taken the word, she's made it first person. She tells her story. She, she shows her expertise, and she has proof. And she has images to go with it. Yep. I want to tell you about Lisa, who you don't want to be like. And Lisa is actually actually this wonderful person who uh, lives in Stanford, Connecticut, and she has she works for a company, and she has a full time job. And at night she's an entrepreneur, so she works like crazy. And she was one of these people. She called me up and she said, "I can't do my LinkedIn," and she actually had on her profile. This is no kidding. Site under construction <laughs> for two years. <laughs> She said, I'm so embarrassed, I don't have time. And all these people are looking, because she has her own business. I mean, she's talking to people all over the world. And um, so you think about that, and there are a lot of people that say, well, my site's under construction. And you think about a, someone who's got a, a brand, you want to be the person, you want to be ahead of it, and so that you are really expressing what is it about you that's special. So you want to, I really want to ask you to make a commitment to be your best professional self, and to it, take it online. Don't be nervous about, you know, you're, you're able to go in and do a great interview. Why can't you share that online, that special thing that you do, right? And it's committing to be you within you. I'd like to ask you that. Thank you very much. <laughs>